Alrighty everybody, here we go with the grand unboxing, or maybe unbagging is probably what I ought to say. Oh, hey, come on FedEx, you're making me look like a fool here. I'm gonna have to just tear this brutally open so as to get to my newest published book entitled The Comic Book Lesson. Join me, my friends, as I gaze upon it for the first time. Oh. Would you look at that? These are my sample copies. Hopefully we'll get a nice big box of them later on. But, oh, I am so pleased with how that turned out. And uh, here's the back cover. You get a little sample of the uh, interior artwork there. But, oh, you know, guys, I wish I could show you more of the inside of it. But I'm going to hold off on that and give you a full tour uh, with my very next video. Hopefully next week we'll do that. Not keep you guys waiting much more than a single week for that one. But let's see what these two look like side by side, shall we? There we go, the first book, The Drawing Lesson, and its follow-up, The Comic Book Lesson. I am very excited to show you uh, the interior of this book and tell you more about it. But for now, let's get on with today's video, which is going to be all about what do comic book publishers really want? Okay, let's get started with my first piece of advice. Publishers care way more about your ideas and storytelling skills than they do about your drawing abilities. Now, I'm going to sort of pull the uh, focus back a little bit so that I can show a copy of Brody's Ghost, a series that I worked very hard on and uh, one that I was, you know, kind of obsessed with presenting my best uh, drawing skills, starting with the very first page. You can see quite a lot of detail there. And then a few pages later, let's go to the big uh, spread where I was kind of almost trying to <laughs> uh, impress everybody. Look at all the detail. Now, you might be thinking, oh, unless I can draw uh, pages like this, uh, publishers are not going to be interested uh, in me. Well, no, that is certainly not the case. And uh, I want to be careful about how I present this because I'm not accusing this author of not having drawing skills, far from it, Dave Pilkey uh, has uh, fantastic drawing skills, but in this series, Dogman, he is trying to draw in the manner of a child. And he's scribbling out words, uh, and he's not caring about human anatomy so much. Well, guess what? This is one of the top-selling uh, graphic novels out there. Uh, the readers love it. They buy every one that comes out. Why? Because it's engaging storytelling, the jokes are funny, it's addictive. And this is what the publishers are looking for. Not necessarily this drawing style, uh, certainly don't want to say that, we'll talk more later. Um, but they're looking for great ideas for a story. They're looking for funny jokes, they're looking for characters that the readers care about. That is really what matters. Don't think that you're going to win your way into the industry by way of highly detailed drawings. Um, publishers are very focused on the story itself, the concept behind it, and your storytelling skills. Let's move on to the next one. Number two, most publishers are looking for graphic novels. This means at least 100 pages, but ideally around 150, 200 or more. Now, when I first got started in comics, it was back in the mid-1990s, and this was the kind of thing I was doing, a sort of a traditional comic book, about 24, I think exactly 24 pages uh, in each issue. That's what I grew up with. There may still be some comics fans that are getting their comics that way, but i got to tell you, these days the publishers are publishing graphic novels. And my latest one, uh, My Last Summer with Cass, was published in both a hardcover edition and a paperback. Uh, 250 pages of comic book storytelling in this book. Uh, so that, the, again, don't get distracted too much by the drawing style. I'm more talking about the length of the story. And in a funny way, the spine on the shelf ends up wide enough that uh, people can see it on the shelf. Let me show you one of my, uh, you know, uh, Brody's Ghost books. It was published by Dark Horse Comics, and they were sort of experimenting with a, uh, a slimmer uh, volume here. I wonder if they're still doing this. But I think mainstream publishers would be concerned about, this is only about 80, uh, 85, 90 pages 
uh, in one of these, they would be concerned about this getting lost on the shelf, just in terms of the spine, maybe just in terms of the expectation of what readers want. They want to get immersed uh, for a while. And that probably means at least 100. I'm going to say more like 150. This is my uh, Miki Falls. This is when I first started doing graphic novels rather than um, flimsy comic books like I started out with. This one is about 170, 160 uh, pages per book. So that's just what you should be thinking about in terms of the ease of uh, having a publisher interested you should be planning for a longer story. And I would say, in a way, it almost can't be too long. It could only be too short. If you had a fantastic idea and it's coming in at 500 pages and, and the publisher falls in love with it, they'll find a way. You know, they might have to break it into two or something like that. I don't know. A thousand pages, <laughs> you're, you're asking for trouble. But again, if they fall in love with the story idea, they'll find a way. Uh, I'm just guiding you towards the sort of basic beginning length. I'd say get to around 100, 150 in your planning uh, if you want to make it super appealing to a publisher. Number three, there is no single industry style that you need to adhere to. Almost any style can work, but it needs to look professional. So here's a graphic novel by Raina Telgemeier, who maybe is the number one most successful uh, graphic novelist working today, and for good reason. She delivers fantastic storytelling uh, with every single book that she does. But you can see her style is um, a certain type of uh, cartoony style. You know, it's, it's all her own. It comes very naturally to her. Certainly, if you are working in something um, that's in this realm you're in good shape for uh, appealing to publishers, but really you shouldn't be imitating anyone else's style. You should find your own. You know, For the Brody's Ghost story, this type of style felt natural to me, and I'm very glad that I pursued that. But when it came time for me to do the drawing lesson, uh, I got way more uh, cartoony, sometimes in highly exaggerated ways. I mean, look at his face there, right? So maybe heading more into the Raina Telgemeier uh, territory of, uh, of enjoying the, the humor of cartoony drawing styles. Um, so anyway, there's a huge variety of possibilities. Don't think that there's an industry style the way there used to be, I would say, in the age of the Superman comics and, uh, you know, uh, Spider-Man. There was sort of a, a superhero industry style that you, uh, at, at that time, would have wanted to adhere to. These days, you are free to find your own way. And um, there's, uh, I would say, thousands of different uh, styles that could be uh, embraced by publishers right now. Uh, be true to yourself. Be true to what works for you. Number four, publishers need to see your entire story in rough form first, giving them the opportunity to request changes. All right, so here you see um, just a printer paper version of My Last Summer of, uh, with Chaos as I uh, got started on it. And I want you to see the, um, the way that I was doing the text here. I was, you know, this was all scanned into the computer in rough form, and then I was dropping the lettering in on top without even bothering to put the speech bubbles because none of it was finalized. This was all going to be looked at carefully by the uh, publisher and things uh, would change. So here you see even me, I think, making notes to myself. Should I get rid of uh, some of this stuff? Uh, lots of little notes here. Condense into one page, move page eight, you know, all of this stuff. They need to see the entire uh, story in this type of form uh, before publishing so that they can ask for changes. This one is sort of interesting here. It says, I may expand this to make it a double page spread. Um, so this was going to be this opening page here. Well, let's see if I followed my own advice. Yes, indeed I did. It, uh, it became a double page spread before it went into the final uh, book. Now, as a beginner, someone who has never been published before, you could roll the dice and create a 160 page finished book that is ready to be published um, to get their attention, I would not completely dissuade you from doing that. 
uh, although be prepared for them to ask you to make changes, which can be a little heartbreaking when you've put so much time into final work. Uh, but uh, in any case, once you get your foot in the door and you have a track record like I do, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to show the entire story in rough form, start to finish, all 250 pages, so that the editor uh, can request changes. And that's going to lead us right on to the next uh, little tip. Number five, they will request changes, possibly very big changes. You must be willing to accept the majority of these changes. So this is from the rough version of My Last Summer with Cass, uh, and you can see here that I have written Remove, pages 54 to 57. So uh, this page, this one, this one, this one, gone uh, from the final book, because my editor felt that it was unnecessary and that it was uh, stronger to uh, end with this uh, powerful visual scene right here. So anyone who's got the book this is how that first section ends. Uh, and this idea of mine of having Megan go back to the cottage without Cass and sort of feel her absence um, was deemed unnecessary. And I had to just say, all right, I'll go along with that. Now, I don't have to go along with every single change that they request, but I always say, you know, maybe eight or nine out of ten, I better go along with them, and then I'll choose the ones that I feel strongly about and sort of push back uh, and, and say, I really feel strongly that it needs to be my way <laughs> in this instance. But if you assert yourself on everything, no one's going to want to work with you. Uh, they need you to be cooperative. They need you to play ball. Number six, publishers don't necessarily prefer digital artwork over traditional artwork but they will need it to be delivered in digital form. So again, we're going to go back to Akiko, my comic book series from the mid-1990s. Um, and th in those days, I was taking actual printed artwork, even though this might look a little bit like Photoshop. Photoshop was involved, but it was printed out on paper, and I was mailing physical originals, uh, FedExing them to a printer in Texas. Uh, and they would turn it into, they would photograph those pieces of original art or scan them or something, uh, and they would uh, get it into digi digital form. Well, those days are long gone. Uh, people want you to hand the original uh, pages in, in digital form of some kind. Uh, those of you who know Photoshop and uh, stuff like that, I think a TIFF generally is the file form that they're expecting it to be in with uh, different layers and so forth. Um, you should be saving everything in layers so that you can make changes. I think it's safe to say, uh, for example, that uh, Raina Telgemeier's work uh, is begins as ink on paper, but then is turned digital, and then it is uh, colored completely digitally by uh, a colorist. Right, so um, you may begin with traditional artwork, as I believe Raina maybe even now does, I and mean, she might be changing now, but uh, certainly at the beginning, she was doing ink on paper, black lines on white paper, and uh, probably scanning that herself, I would guess, turning it into digital form, and uh, passing that on to the colorist, and it's all digital from there on out. Um, so, yeah, if you are... Uh, if you prefer to work using traditional methods, and, you know, maybe I, I'll go ahead and show the drawing lesson again, because this, this, is, this has got a lot of hand-drawn stuff in it. There's a, uh, I'm sort of tweaking things here and there with Photoshop, but this really is a, a hand-drawn traditional method comic book. Um, uh, they didn't mind me working uh, using these traditional materials but they did want it to be delivered to them from the very beginning uh, in digital form. So if you're creating comics using traditional style, just know uh, the comic publishers are not going to want you to be mailing original artwork into them. Not anymore. Those days are gone. Uh, it's, you're going to have to be capable of turning it into a digital form uh, one way or another. Number seven, publishers prefer the speech bubble text to be separate from the art. 
Many prefer you use a font rather than hand lettering. Okay, so forgive me for doing this a little bit shaky cam style here, but uh, I'm just doing a handheld shot so that I can show you um, a sample of artwork from the comic book lesson, which is in stores July 26th. I think I forgot to say that uh, in the first um, un unboxing section. Uh, but in any, any case, you can see the speech bubbles, and I'm going to start clicking uh, on the different pieces of text and making them temporarily disappear because all of this, including even the speech bubbles themselves, it's all on a separate layer. Uh, now you could, if you want to, work your speech bubbles into the artwork, making it permanently part of all that. But I can guarantee you, the publishers like the flexibility of that text being uh, on a completely separate layer, and in my case, each and every little line is on a separate layer, allowing them complete control and flexibility to tweak the dialogue and change things, copy editing, all of that good stuff. And of course, you know, using a font makes that a whole lot easier to make changes because it's in a font. You just delete and you replace it with something new. Handwritten, you know, it's a lot of work to rewrite all of that by hand. Not saying that nobody does comics with uh, hand lettering anymore, but I'll bet you it's pretty rare. Uh, these days, I think the font is pre preferred, strongly preferred, by most publishers. Just wanted to quickly add that uh, the sound effects, I very often will work straight into the artwork. I don't think that's so much of an issue. It's more the narration and the dialogue in the speech bubbles that needs to be on a separate layer. Uh, but let's move on to number eight here. Publishers often assert their preferences when it comes to the title and the cover design. Uh, to some degree, these parts of the book are their territory. So here we have My Last Summer with Cass. This originally was going to be called Two Artists. They wanted me to change uh, the title. And indeed, this cover design was something that I almost had to kind of audition for. I had to show them different designs. Uh, and they chose what they wanted. They, actually, the original art is much larger than this. You could see their feet and everything, and they, they said, Let, we want to crop it. Uh, so a lot of this stuff they feel strongly about. In a minute, I'll, I'll explain why publishers feel that way, but I'll give you a couple of more uh, examples. The drawing lesson was going to be called The Mentor, uh, because I was so focused on the idea of providing this mentor experience. Uh, and uh, the cover design, not you know, I think basically I, I gave them three or four things to choose from and they selected this one. That one went quite smoothly in terms of the design. Billy Click, this is not a graphic novel, it's just the uh, prose fiction series I did years ago. But uh, he was originally going to be called Billy Brainer, then Billy Bugby, and then finally Billy Click. Uh, they felt very strongly about the title of the series, which meant changing the very name of the main character. Uh, so, yeah, basically the thing is, when you get to the title and the cover design, you're getting into the promotional uh, materials for the book, uh, and that's where the publisher uh, brings their expertise and says, boy, you know, two artists... That this title is not going to grab people, or this is t this title is just going to be hard for us to uh, promote, or make it sounds kind of vague. Maybe I'm not sure, but they uh, had me go back to the drawing board and, pr and propose some different uh, titles, and we eventually came up with "My Last Summer with Cass." It could have been called "One Last Summer with Cass." I think those were the two final things that I proposed. But be ready for that. Don't fall too much in love with the title. Uh, of your graphic novel, and indeed the cover design is one, like one of the very last things that you get to anyway. Uh, don't fret too much about that now. You'll be lucky if you get to the stage of uh, having the chance to have a front cover uh, for a book. But uh, just as I say, that's kind of, I feel like that's their territory. Um, don't get too attached, don't get too bent out of shape, uh, or certainly don't be surprised if they ask you to change uh, the title and the cover design, because I've had to make those changes again and again. Number nine, publishers need you to accurately predict how long it will take you to finish the book. Don't assume you can produce many pages in a single day. 
So here's Brody's Ghost, as I showed you. Some of the pages are very, very detailed, but some of them not quite so detailed. This is more just like a dialogue scene. I found no matter what, though, uh, I could not produce more than one page per day if you averaged it all out. Because again, I would do this in rough form. I could do two, maybe uh, four uh, rough pages in a day, and then I would hand that off to the publisher. It came back to me, uh, and uh, after we'd done the changes, to transform those uh, rough pages into finished pages. At that stage, generally, t I could only get two done uh, per day at best. So I think in a way that averages out to something like one page per day. Maybe uh, you, I could get, if I had done it all from rough to final, I might have been able to get maybe one and a quarter pages done per day working at the height of my abilities. But you know, each panel requires you to uh, think of a different picture and to work out all the problems and so forth. It's not just the drawing, it's sort of the figuring it out. Where do the speech bubbles go? All of this stuff is time consuming. So I would say don't promise that you're going to be able to produce four pages per day uh, uh, from a blank page to finished artwork because uh, I don't know if that's possible <laughs> for most people. This drawing style, considerably cartoonier. I might have been able to get uh, as many as two pages done uh, in a single day, but that, that's unusual for me. I would say, I, for me, I plan on one, day, one page per day working at top speed. Number 10. Your first editor will probably not be your last editor. Getting along with a variety of editors is an important part of the job. All right, so for this last one, I just thought I'd show the uh, front cover of uh, the comic book lesson one more time. Uh, this one I put last because this really is the kind of advice you need after you've already made it, in a way. Once you've got a book deal, once you've got an editor, uh, be prepared. In my case, I've gone through more than a dozen uh, different editors over the course of my career, and it can be tough. You sort of fall in love with uh, one editor and their working style, and then they just move on. They're leaving the company, they're doing something else with their lives, and it can be a shock to your system. Your Part of your job is to be ready for that and to move from one editor to the next, adjust to their new ways of doing things, um, and be you know flexible and s sort of uh, f friendly and kindly enough uh, that every editor will love uh, working with you. That's uh, that's part of it. But again, you know, this you should be so lucky as to get to the stage when you have an editor and that editor is leaving and you have a second editor because that means you're in the business, baby. You've made it. Uh, you're living the dream. Uh, in any case, I think it's time for me to wind this one down. Um, if you're looking for advice on how to get published, I will link to that video. I have a video that explains how I got published and gives you my advice about that. And also a uh, link there will be down there for um, my playlist that g gives all of my comic book advice. The writing, the drawing, the layouts, the speech bubbles, sound effects, everything. It's all in that playlist. Uh, something more than 40 different videos now. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out. But let's go ahead and wind this one down. I really want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.